On an episode of the show last season, we featured the building of this, the ultimate fishing machine. The feedback was excellent, with many viewers asking for more information. So we're going to revisit the project again in more detail. We're going to build the ultimate fishing machine. And here to help us is Steve Trimble from Superior Textiles. Hi, Brad. Good to see you again. Good. You? Good. You're absolutely right. With a little ingenuity, we're going to take the 16-foot scorpion and turn it into a premier fishing boat. We started with a Misty River 16-foot scorpion model aluminum utility boat, an easy load swing tongue trailer, and a plan. It's all going to be a raised casting platform with a live well underneath, OK, and a hatch. To create a flat cockpit floor area, Steve first removed the middle seat by cutting the aluminum flush with the hull. He then marked where the floor would rest and cut the seat down to that level to use the old sides as support joists. We elected to leave the rivets in the hull so we wouldn't have to patch the holes. We'll cover that up later with some carpeting. Next, we rigged the used 50 horsepower Mercury four-stroke onto the transom. It's important to make sure it's exactly centered and then drill and bolt the mounting bracket into place using plenty of sealant for use below the waterline like 3M's 4200, both inside and out. You're going to encounter challenges in a project like this, and our first one was converting the outboard from a tiller model to remote steering. We'd ordered the conversion kits from Mercury and after consulting the instructions, first removed the cowling to give us easier access to the power head. I removed the old tiller handle and installed the new bracket and the connector rod from the engine to the Teleflex steering cable that we'd later connect to the steering wheel on the new helm. The next step was to convert the engine over to accept remote shifter and throttle cables. Depending on which model engine you have, consult your installation instructions because the cables connect into the helm control in different spots. And, with the help of an assistant, first find neutral and then adjust the cables with these barrels at the engine before clipping into place. To complete the engine conversion, I simply plugged in the wiring harness and ran it forward to where the helm would go. On day two, Steve tackled getting the floor in and had some tips on how to loft the pattern of the hull in order to get the correct curvature for the supports. Yeah. What I'm going to do is lay this, put this paper on here, set it down, and I'm going to cut it down here so I get the arc in it without it buckling. Right. And then I'm going to draw a line right on top of the paper. Right. And then we'll cut that off, and that will be our that's shape. Your, that's your for each of the ribs under the floor, Steve transferred each of the slightly different patterns to a pressure-treated 2x4, cut them out on the bandsaw, and they fit perfectly. Each piece had a drainage hole cut and was coated with epoxy and allowed to dry before being screwed into place at the end of each rib. The next step was to loft a pattern of the floor onto a piece of quarter-inch mahogany door skin. By taking measurements of the width of the floor required at each rib and transferring this to the door skin, we were able to cut a template and test the fit before cutting into the expensive King Starboard material we'd chosen to finish the boat in. So Steve, we've decided to use King Starboard for the floor and a lot of the other parts of the boat. We could have used three quarter inch plywood. What's the advantage of King Starboard? King Starboard is 100% uh, impervious to any of the elements. So it's UV stable, it won't rot, it won't fade. Yeah, it's it a little more expensive. Yes, it is. So uh, by the time you use a plywood and uh, coat it in some sort of uh, protective, you're probably cost effective by using the, the King Starboard. What's it like to work with? It is beautiful. You can paint it, you can sand it, you can drill it, you can thermal form it, and it comes with a natural anti-skid surface. Well, let's get started. With the floor in place, Steve moved to patterning the gunnels, again using the mahogany door skin to mark the curvature of the hull and transfer it exactly to the King Starboard. Steve routed the inside edge of the three-quarter inch King Starboard gunnel to fit tightly up against the existing gunnels on the Misty River Scorpion. And happy with the fit, first drilled through the hull every six inches and then drilled pilot holes into the edge of the gunnel and installed the gunnel with 3-inch number 10 stainless wood screws. Over the next few days, Steve continued to work on the front deck where we'd later install a trolling motor and the rest of the port and starboard side gunnels. Next week, we'll continue our build of the ultimate fishing machine.